The game set G7SE, the first ever licensed Xbox controller with Hall Effects thumbsticks. But how does it perform? Let's find out. Price of 45 US dollars on GameSer's website and 49.99 here in UK on GameSer's official Amazon store. We get the controller, a small box and a very premium USB A to USB C cable. The cable feels kind of proprietary because the port is very small. I haven't been able to use any other USB C cable in this controller. So let's start with the design and the controller is based on the standard Xbox thumbstick layout, but the controller is a bit wider and the grip sort of taper in a bit more. The back has uh, these hard textured plastics. And in-hand feel is actually very good. Uh, it's a little bit different from the standard controller, but I got used to it very, very easily. In terms of build quality, I noticed certain things. It's built very solidly, but uh, the you see the stick hitting here is a bit different sound, but if you press it, now it's like, so because it's a removable faceplate, so there are some gaps, but not that, uh, you know, uh, kind of a deal breaker. One thing that bugs me a little bit, so these anti-friction rings are actually quite good, but if you push against them, that's a bit of a, you know, um, a sticking point for me because I use open back headsets and I hear that a lot, especially in games when you're pushing forward and you want to run, yeah, you hear that. But yeah, all, all in all, very solidly built controller. Okay, so we have this amazing GameSer Nexus app, which is actually available on the Xbox platform, so you don't actually need a PC to do any changes. This is the first page when you uh, open the app. We have this profiles tab, so we can actually go into the profile and whichever profile is currently active, it will be lit in red. Now, if we go into configuration, we have the mappings, uh, which basically you can uh, map any of the, the buttons that you like. Now, that's not just for the back buttons. It's actually for any of the face buttons as well. You can change them to whatever. One neat feature is the back buttons can actually be mapped to your whatever this, um, the, the view and I believe the select buttons and stuff and the share button as well. So something that sometimes is missing from like Power A and other controllers, but it's here. And uh, in the sticks tab, so if I go into the sticks, a few different modes here for the stick. So right now you can see that my right stick dead zone is at 4%. And um, in this profile, I've kept the maximum at um, 100%. So this is basically for the circularity of the stick. And at 4%, I don't have any stick drift. Um, I do use precision rings and stuff, so that sort of accounts for it as well. You know, there's not much play in the stick. But if I wanted to, there is something called raw mode. So if I click on this one and click on raw, now this becomes like a normal sort of stick response where if you go into the circularity test, they will be showing, uh, you know, the error, whatever, the error rate, 8 9%. Um, this can come in handy in certain games, so I'll talk more about this when it comes to the stick response. But what you can do is, if you don't want it, you can just go to the maximum of 100, so this will be perfectly circular, uh, and you can change your dead zones here. And whatever you do to this profile, so will be safe to this profile. Triggers, uh, so if we go into triggers, we have this hair trigger options. So what this will do is, it will, the moment you press it, it will do the full actuation of the trigger. Unfortunately, there are no uh, trigger stops. So this uh, just uh, like a, a software, because these are Hall Effects triggers, so even a slight actuation can do a full um, uh, register. So if I take this off, and if I slowly press it, so now I have a full, uh, basically, range of motion of the uh, trigger, the full travel. Uh, and uh, vibration is you can change the intensity and stuff. So if I come out of it now, that's saved to the profile two, and then in profile one, I have other options. So you see, like I kept my profile one with the raw stick range, and my profile two is um, uh, with the rounded stick, the circular one, and then profile three, I've just kept it like um, same thing round with the 10% dead zone, like initially what they have, but this is something like for, with the full sort of trigger. So if I'm playing any racing games and stuff, so I can do that. Now to change profiles on the fly, what we do is we basically uh, press this multifunction button at the face and we press, so B is, so if it blinks once, that means I'm in profile one. So I show it again, so press B, light blinks only once, I'm in profile one. If I press multifunction button and A, it will blink twice. Now I'm, I've come to profile two. And then if I press multifunction and X, it will blink three times, I'm in profile three. And then we have a default one, which is multifunction and Y. 
To map the back buttons on the fly, what we do is we have to press and hold the multifunction button with the back button for three seconds and it will start blinking. Now, whatever back button we want to assign to, we press that, now that's been assigned. If you want to disable the back button, it's basically the same thing, press multifunction and hold it together. The LED starts blinking, now just press the back button, now that's been disabled. So this is basically, if you don't want to go into the app, you can actually do it on the controller itself. Uh, we have this D-pad, multifunction press up for volume up and down, and press right and left for uh, chat mix. That's for the headset that's plugged into the 3.5 mil port. So let's start with the triggers. The triggers are a little bit different than the standard. They have these slopes, but texture is in the middle, which is very nice. They have these sharp edges and kind of like squarey feeling. But to be honest, you know, using them is, is not a bad experience. Now, as I showed in the software, we have the hair trigger options. Unfortunately, there are no physical trigger stops, but these are Hall Effect triggers. So having the hair trigger options, these are basically instantly actuated. I wish the resistance was a bit more because, uh, you know, that would have been nice because uh, there is no physical stop. So using them very quickly would have been nice. But in practice, they work absolutely perfectly. I am actually now that I've used it, it's not a deal breaker for me. It just would have been nice to have that. But I guess to keep the cost down, they've decided not to implement that and put a software thing in there. So it's, it's OK. It, it works. The bumpers are nicely placed and they have a little bit of a texture here next to the triggers. Using them was not a problem at all. They do feel a little bit more tactile, so I guess these have like the normal tech switches. Uh, I don't know what angle they're placed, but you can actuate them from anywhere. Moving on to the ABXY button, this is just the membrane style buttons. They're nicely sized uh, and uh, using them was not an issue at all. The D-pad is uh, quite nice. Again, this is uh, the membrane style D-pad. These other buttons, these have these, uh, I guess, the normal switches, no micro switches, but just the standard ones, because they do feel very tactile, especially the, this multifunction button as well. And same with the mic mute button. All right, the back buttons. So we have two, and unfortunately these are like, they didn't put any texture on them. Uh, so they do, you can differentiate because the grip have texture, but I wish they had put uh, some kind of texture on them. Actuating them is actually quite easy. You can actuate them from bottom, top, wherever your sort of finger lands, uh, you can do that. Now I have this bad habit of, I can't do from the inside of my fingers, I have to do it with a tip, so I have to move my finger all the time. Good thing about this controller is this edge here, uh, this kind of a ridge thing that sort of pops out. So when I do move my finger, my sort of part, this middle part here, this knuckle sort of rests here. So it's actually quite a good feeling. So using them in game, worked perfectly, I didn't have any issues. I just wish they had put a different kind of texture, like a grippier texture, like other controllers have Power A and um, the Gambit, and so there's a little bit of a texture there. But in practice, yeah, it's, it's not a bad design. And um, they've put these uh, stops, it completely you know, blocks them from pressing. Um, I wish instead of putting these, because it's so easy to disable them in software, I wish they put like the trigger stops. But yeah, that's something there. So if you don't want to go to the software just quickly, you can disable them and then yeah, just grip the controller normally and you won't actuate them. All right, let's talk thumbsticks. So this is the big part of this, you know, uh, controller hall effects. Um, and um, the physical design of the thumbstick is a little bit different. It, the standard Xbox control freak will not fit. It's, you know, it requires uh, the PS5 ones and even the PS5 ones leave markings on it. So PS5 ones are a bit of a tighter fit as well. So just bear that in mind. If you use Control Freaks and you're on the Xbox platform, you will have to buy the PS5 Control Freaks. Uh, but the material of the sticks is sort of like harder material, kind of slippery because they are pretty smooth in the center. Uh, but because I use Control Freaks and uh, different grips and stuff, it wasn't a problem for me. Uh, use of precision rings actually quite good. So there's uh, plenty of room in the shaft here to basically put the precision ring if you use that. Like I mentioned, the anti-friction rings are good, but it's just like when you press it against it, it makes a bit of a noise. But yeah, it's I don't think it's a deal breaker for me. Now, like I showed in the software, we have different sort of modes that we can assign. So we can have a, a really circular one uh, or we can put uh, the raw mode. Something that I have noticed, uh, basically that I want to tell you guys is, it, because we are so used to of the potentiometer sticks, 
I, th I think there's a, a only way I can describe it is like it feels at times there's a bit of a hes hesitation from the stick to the initial actuation that you do. I feel like it doesn't, it, it takes a little tiny bit to basically catch up and uh, it happens especially when you are using like other things. So I don't know what that is because um, the sticks are, uh, the triggers are whole effects as well. So there's a magnet there and then the magnet, I don't, I honestly notice this a lot when you're aiming and it feels like at times it felt like a hesitation, like my stick was not registering the input. Um, and, uh, and then at times it's just like too much. So I do use precision ring, so just bear that in mind. But I did notice I had to keep the sensitivity on the, this controller a lot higher. So I was playing Call of Duty on like 18, 19 sensitivity. And uh, something uh, I can easily do on other controllers, you know, flicking. Uh, and um, when somebody comes close, like, you know, when you are in a gunfight, you do a lot more movement. I realize this is a bit inconsistent. So normally if you're going, it's okay, but at times you, you'll realize your aim is not catching up or you'll have so much input. Um, so it's happened actually, I would say, quite a lot uh, in gaming. And I, I don't know, maybe if I need to get used to it, whatever, but testing it. So this is what I did. I set different profiles. So one with the raw uh, sort of stick mode and one with the circular one. And the best result I got was with the raw, so not the circular one, so I kept it like the raw input. I think there is definitely uh, in a, a difference between the standard potentiometer sticks and these um, uh, Hall Effects ones. Uh, so GameStar is saying that these are rated for 5 million cycle, and the potentiometer are usually rated for 2 million cycles. But for me, this now this is the controversial part. So I, personally, I think for Call of Duty and multiplayer games online, like Battlefield and stuff, I would buy the normal G7 with a potentiometer stick. It's just, I'm, I guess I'm just so used to of that response curve. Currently, we don't have an option to change the response curve. Um, maybe that's something games that can implement where the initial actuation, because I'm finding it like initial actuation is slow. And then if you do a lot, it's just too much. So maybe if they give us that option, like the ROG Rikiri I just reviewed, uh, the Army Crate has, and I guess, I think um, Thrustmaster eSwap controllers, like they have something like that as well. So that's missing at the moment. And um, yeah, so this is something that I noticed in the last couple of hours. I played a lot with this Battlefield and Call of Duty. And yeah, I, I, there, is, there is a little bit of a difference. So verdict, guys. For me personally, the aiming response kind of issue that I've experienced throws me off a bit. And I don't think I would be playing multiplayer games with this. Single player games definitely, I, I think, will be okay. But I don't know, maybe it's just my controller or whatever. Maybe somebody else can make a video and uh, has a bit more <laughs> knowledge about this and uh, tell you guys well, what that issue is, that sometimes it doesn't, it feels like as if it's not responding and then it responds too much. Other than that, I think the controller is quite amazing. but. One thing that I'm thinking of doing actually, and I'm, yeah, I think I'd have to do that is to get the normal G7 and do a test because I don't think it's the design that's throwing me off because I have so many other controllers and I do use them uh, daily or every other day that I don't think that a design would throw my aim off like that uh, or give me like that inconsistent response. So I want to do that. I will make a video uh, on that hopefully soon where I'll compare the normal G7 to this because the G7 has Alps thumbsticks and I believe, uh, judging by the other reviews, they're calibrated quite nicely. Other than that, yeah, the control is nice. I wish it had trigger stops, um, but the, the software thing actually works quite okay. Uh, and I wish the back buttons had um, texture on them. Uh, and uh, this um, little annoying noise with the um, anti-friction rings was not there. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, everything for me. I hope this was useful. I'm so sorry that, you know, it didn't work for me and I don't want to, um, you know, throw you off or whatever. I just feel like, yeah, this, I had very high hopes that this would be um, the solution. But to me, if if this is what the whole effect thumbsticks are, then I think personally I'll be just sticking with the normal potentiometer sticks um, and uh, longevity, we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, if you are playing multiplayer games, be mindful, uh, and depending on what controller you're using. One thing I was actually thinking about, 
which could be quite amazing. So we can have the SE and the normal S. So SE could be for single player games and the normal S could be for multiplayer games because they're the same design and stuff. And that actually could be a perfect solution. But yeah, I hope this video had some useful info. And um, if you have any questions, please do leave me a comment. I do my best to reply to every comment I get. And thank you so much to everybody who subscribed. Your support means a lot. And thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you in one of my other videos. Bye for now.